Welcome to Buenaventura Life. This time I'm going to be talking about some of the things I've done and seen and had happen over the last year, plus some project management ideas, uh, and especially I'll go over my gear, cameras, recorders, and software. So please enjoy. While working on a lot of things over the weekend, I started to think, why don't I put together the mid-July, mid-summer briefing. And part of this is, I, there's so much going on, but I want to consolidate it and explain it to you. The big one is the engines run, the running gear is in good condition, the bottom looks good, no dings, no ducks and cracks or anything. And so with that, I'm very happy. Uh, had the divers come in, Joe Jones, uh, he works uh, middle neck or the northern neck of Virginia. He cleaned the bottom, uh, they cleaned through holes, added zincs. The oceans were not designed to have zincs on the trims or the rudders. So he found a way to put zincs onto the trim tabs there was no zinc on the hull. There was a single screw hole, and so we searched around and came up with a zinc that's going to go on this weekend. Uh, prop shafts are big. He had the wrong size, so he's picking up more to put those on. Bottom looks good. He's got to do a little more work, but then uh, everything will be ready below the water line. Air conditioning, I'm having issues. The the big one is tearing down the motor of the forward galley dining area uh, unit. That It's a big heavy duty and it's tight. It turns but it's tight so I'm going to take finish taking it down. I got part of it out but it got too hot in there so I need to fix that. The aft, it's a switch issue no doubt. I just have to tear the switches out. Probably it'll be better to order a replacement unit from somewhere and install that and then have, fix this one and have it as a worker. The midship needs a start capacitor somewhere and I need an AC person to take care of that. Now in the bilge, uh, four bilge, it's looking good. I'm hoping I can flush out the shower sump and possibly clean that out. It may be just jammed and I can clean that out. So that's that's one hope. Midship bilge pump was replaced in June while Scott Crosby was here working on the engines. The aft bilge pumps are working. I don't I, I need to actually try something and put some water down the shower while watching the sump. I don't know if it's working because you pour water in, it goes out somewhere. So that's going to work. Now the engine room, as you can see in this slide, uh, Scott had been flushing the fuel lines and the fuel tank because we had a lot of water in there. And some of it slopped out into the bilge area up forward not back where you see the battery in the bucket and the uh, oil tank. The, that didn't get any diesel in it. It was all up in the fore. So I'm cleaning that up and it's taking a while to evaporate. Midsummer. Oh man. You know, in the last year, the seawater pump was replaced. Freshwater system, I got working enough to be able to use it with dock water. Circuit breakers, I'm replacing them as they fail. AC shore power connector on the boat was replaced. The power panel was fixed. A new power cable was purchased and used. And so the AC power is now stable and looks great. I still have to do the galley. Uh, from the power panel to the galley. But that's the, the, these are things you are going to have to look at on recommissioning a boat. Cleaning is a constant issue. It's to get the bla blasted mold 
under control. I'm doing. I'm getting there. Uh, some of the areas are now not regrowing mold and looking really good. Stabilizing the boat just means getting things so that I can walk on board and not be concerned about something failing. Now the engine's running. I've been doing deck cleaning every now and then. I still have more deck cleaning to do, and it'll be deck cleaning forever. Of course, it's a boat. And plugging leaks in the superstructure is. I'm not doing any fiberglass work at this time. What I'm doing is taking some butyl tape, plug the hole, and that stopped it. And it stopped a lot of water input into the boat. So it's very important. This is cool. Now, it's tough keeping up with things and finding holes, but you've got to do it all the time. I'm very happy to say that this boat is not going to sit at the dock. This boat is going to go out on the water. And the reason I got her so, that the price I did is that one of the things that is going to be important is Buena Ventura is not going to be sitting at a dock anymore. Soon she'll have enough seaworthiness to be taken out, if, not, if only into the river for some testing but at least she'll be able to get out and move on her own. Many more hours are needed. I mean, this is going to be hundreds of hours to recommission the boat. Thousands of dollars. Uh, my budget, I've only spent about half of what I initially planned just to get the boat seaworthy. So I'm ahead in that respect. There's a lot of results. There's a lot of setbacks. There's a lot of, I still have things to explore to come up with a reasonable repair plan. And then uh, it's like you fix something and that gives you, a re, gives you information about what's broken further out down the line. That's just part of what this is. And the big one, I decided on my logo. I, I love the picture of my blue heron. So blue heron is my logo for Buenaventura life. Here's something critical. I can do a whole uh, video on this and I probably will at some point. Taking on a major project. You have got to go into any major project like this one wide open and ready to spend time and money. I looked at this boat many months before deciding to go with her because, uh, honestly, it's a tough boat. She was literally like a derelict. Her stern was sinking. Uh, water through the hatch, through the superstructure was just filling her up and the pumps were off because the batteries were dead. Or they were no more batter. The batteries are completely shot. If you're going in, be honest with yourself. Can you do the work and save money that way? At $100 an hour or something, you're not going to be able to uh, go forever unless you're rich. And if you're rich, you aren't going to own a boat like this. So the only reason I'm doing these videos for the public is that there is nothing. There's no way to go in and say on a big boat, 46 foot size boat, I need to know about the freshwater system. Well, there's nothing. On my sailboat, freshwater system went from bow tank, side tank, to the water tank, the pump, to the galley sink, to the head sink. Boy, <laughs> you, can, you can literally see everything all at once. In this boat, you have your aft head, your forehead, you have your galley, you have the uh, sun deck sink and water. And there's a lot of plumbing. There's a lot of water lines in this boat that some you can't even see. So it's, it's tough to come up with, oh man, I've got to do this, but I don't want to spend the money and I don't want to do it. Well, you've got to do it. And next up is like hire help. I know at certain times there's some things that one, I don't have time to do. Someone else can do it faster and better. Or the 
I have some other part of the boat I'm working on, and it better, it's better to have someone else doing work too. You need some project management skills. I use uh, Microsoft Project and Project Libra to uh, keep track of the boat. It's critical because you're doing multiple systems, freshwater, saltwater, AC electric, DC electric, you have uh, carpentry. There's just so much. You know, like the galley, you need to know how to fix your dishwasher, washer, fix the stove, fix the connectors. Now that's 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 what you have to track. You have to track purchasing parts, when the parts come in, when they can be installed, what needs to be done. So having project management skills is critical, and you'll develop them. Plus, have your plan B, C, and ready for setbacks, like I, the AC units, they work fine and then they don't work, you know, because they just were uh, not capable of sustained use anymore. Oh, that old saying, everything to be done on boat costs twice as much and takes three times longer to get done, it's true. But you're ready for it, you know what it's going to be. The big one in the world is be flexible. The weather gets you, you know, right now it's uh, going to be around 100. That stops almost everything outside. Uh, be relaxed, don't panic. You know, things are going to happen and they aren't going to be pleasant. And then there's times when all of a sudden it's like the engine's running, both engines running, you just cheer and sit back and enjoy what you have. The final slides, there's the link to the Buenaventura website. MY, the MY is motor yacht. So MY is mymotoryacht-buenaventura.com. MY-buenaventura.com is the website, and it's a secure website. Here's my boats. I own a 1983 Ocean Yachts 46 Sunliner. I have a 1984 Catalina 30 Tall Rig Bowsprit. Uh, that's the one that went on the hard. You can see the video of her going on the hard. I have a West Marine 94 Tender, a West Marine 350 Rib. Also, 11. It's 11.5 feet, but it's a 350 is the part number. And a Stamus 26 Sport Fisher. Cameras, I primarily use the Nikon D3500 with the 18 to 55 millimeter Nikkor zoom. I have the GoPro Hero 5 Black. I use the Nikon Coolpix S4100 as, as like a third camera. I'll put it on a tripod and turn it on while I'm doing something so I have three views to choose from. And the usual, the top two lenses go to the Nikon 3500, the bottom lens goes to the Nikon Mat 3500, or 35 millimeter. I got Nikon Mat back in 1966 or 7, I forgot. I use a Sony Digital Recorder ICD UX 533. The UX 560 slipped out and went drink uh, and went away. I'm now learning to use the Zoom H1N the microphones, uh, this is a lavalier, the Shure Micro lavalier works great. I like that one. The Purple Panda lavalier is very good, but it's not quite the same as the Shure. And I, I have the Rode Micro, uh, which I attach to the cameras as I go and do stuff. I use the Foyutech G6 plus three axis stabilizer when I'm walking around. Uh, as you see, even, when, even with this, there's still a bit of a bounce in the camera due to my limp. Uh, I'm working on a way so that the GoPro doesn't pick up the motor sound because the, that thing makes a motor. You can't hear it, but the GoPro can pick it up. Software, uh, GoPro Quick, work with the GoPro stuff as pre use Nikon view and Nikon capture to work with the Nikon images the raw images Adobe Photoshop to do a lot of things uh, specialty work and stuff may some grading but 
not much. Shot cut, I occasionally used, I started with that and I like it, but I really like the DaVinci Resolve. It's free, I like it, I do almost all my final render in it. I do almost all my work in DaVinci Resolve. Grading individual pictures, I'll grade either in Nikon or Adobe. Sometimes I'll grade them in Shotcut, but DaVinci Resolve is the go-to. So that's it. I'm going to put this, the, the slides are going to be on uh, the website of my-buenaventura.com. So the slideshow will be on that website. Please like and subscribe to Buenaventura Life. Appreciate your comments also. Thank you.